Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and deceased. It is I, Emily Sophia, here to break down for you guys the finale episode of Fear the Walking Dead. And we are on the episode that is entitled The Good Man. So, spoiler alert, before I dive into the mad thick of things, as I shall be bearing all in this review. And without further ado, let us get into it. And I shall do my best to address everything that happened in this episode, but it was pretty cram-packed, so chances are I'm going to miss possibly some major topic. In which case, bring it up below. I'll do my best to get around to reading the comments, enrich each other's lives with their knowledge and perspectives and reactions, and it'll be a good time. So, let's talk. Let's chat. What did you guys think, first and foremost, about the season as a whole? I have to say that, you know, Fear the Walking Dead has done a lot of really fascinating stuff, and I think that it's become a pretty cool companion piece to The Walking Dead. Nonetheless, my attachment to The Walking Dead remains quite a bit stronger, so as of yet, I wouldn't say that Fear the Walking Dead really holds a candle to the Mother series yet. But this episode indicates to me that it holds pretty strong promise on that front. We, we got some pretty awesome performances, lots of intense in-your-face action. I mean, th there were parts of it that were reminiscent of, like, <laughs> Terminator 2 for me, like, with the whole storming the medical facility, um, Travis and Madison and company trying to go after Griselda and Chris and, you know, just all, all of that was very exciting to witness and I think was really refreshing after we spent a lot of time in suburbia, I, which I think is probably something that not a lot of us expected when we first heard about the show. Like, oh, it's set in LA. <laughs> We're going to be, you know, in, in the midst of the insanity that, say, we witnessed in Atlanta back in the very beginning of The Walking Dead with the mobs and throngs of zombies, just, I, I think of that iconic scene with Rick on his noble steed, and then it's getting chomped on moments later, and he's stuck in a tank. But, uh, <laughs> anyhow, this episode made up for quite, quite a bit of the, the inactivity that we got, um, earlier on in the season as people are kind of trying to reestablish normal, normalcy, um, we have kind of the militarization of society, military has taken over and is trying to establish safe zones on the periphery of the city, since arguably everything in the center went to hell. <laughs> and then we see that even their, their so-called safety zones on the periphery of the city, those two were a bit compromised, and then, uh, cue the cobalt initiative, Everybody runs, and there you go. <laughs> lots of uh, lots of problems, lots of problematic stuff. But so this, I think, was a really effective culmination of a lot of the emotional tension and things that have just been brewing and boiling this whole time. Finally, all of our characters are thrust into the midst of the zombie madness as Daniel Salazar actually leads the, like, eh, about 2,000 uh, walkers right up to the military in order to distract them enough to get into the facility, which is actually being evacuated. All the medical staff, all the soldiers, everybody's getting the hell out of Dodge. Well, of course, except for Liza, who is attempting to find Chris, attempting to make some form of contact with her family. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> and it was, it was really riveting. I mean, I, I definitely found myself having the, the strongest emotional response that I've had to any of the episodes tonight. So I'm super glad that I was able to feel that way. I was able to really feel the panic and the danger. And even in the midst of a lot of decisions that were like, why did that happen? Like, you know, why is it that Travis had to actually go back to, to confront the families? Why the crap did he shoot Ophelia in the arm of all things? I mean, was he pissed? Did he feel betrayed that ultimately, like, 
he was sort of led into the lion's den. That was, you know, the quality time he spent with her father. I mean, there's just like lots of little things that you can pick at with pins and needles, but I'm going to try and take a bit more of a aerial <laughs> view of of the craziness here. I just I just liked the uh, the breadth of the episode, getting to see as as much as we did, see the families escape from the neighborhood, and already the, the military presence is is completely gone. We get to see a lot of um, a lot of long shots of of the city too, completely blackened, and apparently there's not a lot of sol solar power action down there because. Um, during the nighttime sequences, like as we are are being swept over this this blackened city, like all the only light you see is from fire. <laughs> you know, it's very visceral, hellish, apocalyptic business. I mean, it fits the bill for sure. And then by the end of the episode, actually, we are in the sunlight and we have like very intense, vibrant yellows and blues. Um, and just the, the whole setting of the ocean and this vast, very peaceful expanse. And yet here is, here is this city that was just lately on fire. Um, lots, lots of cool contrast. Cool to see how the environment itself, really, the setting is stepped up as kind of a supporting character in a lot of ways. Um, and then having to endure that that hellish night, um, you know, from, from soldiers freaking stealing the family's SUV to, um, Travis and Madison kind of freeing all, um, everybody who's been held in the medical facility, um, to fighting the walkers that Daniel so casually <laughs> unleashed, <laughs> pretty much leading them out like the you know, the conductor of some crazy parade. It was, I, I was actually, my mind was pretty blown by the fact that nobody saw that coming. Strand himself pointed out in, you know, in the, the corridors of the military's facility where he and Nick very well could have been made into zombie meat. He was like, yeah, don't worry about them. They're slow. <laughs> and then here are these, you know, trained military personnel getting snuck up upon by thousands of walkers thousands now one little one little gripe that i have i guess is that um there's the idea that all of these all of these zombies for the most part are newer so a lot of them look more human um not not quite they, they look different from the walkers that we've seen in the walking dead um but we just don't get to see very much of them in this season. And I know that, like, I saw some interviews and people were like, you know, the, the zombies look so different. And we we barely get to see glimpses of them. I and mean, we see the throngs and hordes of them. And then every once in a while we get some up-close shots. But for the most part, like, they've kind of been obscured from sight. So the focus really in this show is much more so on the people than even the, the undead who they're up against. But, you know. Say lobby. I'm not going to complain too much because I know <laughs> The Walking Dead is coming back to my life, so I'll, I'll get a little bit of yin and yang and get to experience the different stories and stuff. But yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy to see how all of the characters, well, for the most part, stepped up quite a bit in this um, in this episode. Uh, namely, Travis. He had a really transformative moment, and in fact, two of them. The first one being when he beat Travis to death, death with his bare hands after he shot Ophelia, which again, I, I released an audible, I said something, but I, I don't know what I actually said. I made a verbal exclamation. So yeah, it really, really kind of knocked the wind out of me in that moment. But finally, finally, the emotional constipation that is pacifist Travis is over and now clearly he is well not embracing having to kill in this sort of new world but he's realizing that he's got to do what he's got to do and it's it's pretty crazy to see how there there was sort of this agreement struck between Madison and Liza earlier on that like you know if if one of them was ever um 
at risk of turning into one of the zombies that the other would take care of it before that happened. And then ultimately, Travis ends up stepping in and intervening anyway and taking care of it himself. I mean, it's a very deeply symbolic thing, and, and we've seen those kinds of situations happen with characters in the main show, too. Who, like, think, for example, Tyrese. Who refused to kill, refused to kill, refused to kill. I mean, to, to the point that it really screws some people over, <laughs> um, if you recall with the Terminus folks. But, um, yeah, so it's refreshing to see Travis make this turn. I mean, just despite how tragic it is and having to lose someone as, as um, intelligent and as great of a character as Liza was, like, I think that this was an important moment for him, and this marks the beginning of his survival spirit. Um, now, speaking of survival, we see a very clear survivalist in the character of Strand, who he seriously feels like he stepped out of another dimension and into this world. Like, <laughs> like Doctor Who style. He's just, he's just here, but apparently the portal to his other world is, you know, there's no going back through it, so he's just going to deal with this business here. But I got a lot of questions about that guy. I mean, for one thing, he's maintaining quite a sense of style despite the the environment around him. Um, and just a, a lot of the a lot of the choices that he makes with like choosing to to save Nick and trying to utilize his skills and like we we don't get to see as much of that in action. Like it's all very very confusing and cloak and dagger and like what is this guy really on about? Um, fascinating dude. Is clearly he's he's got an idea of what he wants to do and where he wants to be in the midst of this this chaos. Uh, he comes back for his fancy little cufflinks from the guy who's getting nommed on by a zombie. He lets him keep the watch. Ultimately ends up leading the group to his fancy multi-million dollar home on the bayfront. But apparently they're not allowed to stay, and he's not staying either. So I mean, is that even his place? <laughs> like, what what are they what are they doing here? Is he going to join them or vice versa? I mean, clearly the guy is a businessman through and through. He's He's got some street savoir faire, which I think could definitely come in handy for the days to come. But at the same time, it's like, is he going to be willing to actually invest in any of these individuals as people? You know, he says like, hey, you and me will get along just fine. But to what point? Um... Luckily, of course, Liza realizes very quickly on um, kind of the, the truth about the, the way that the virus works and the way that the bites work and such. So she is willing to, to put herself down. And it's, and it's tough, tough to bid, bid farewell to her character. I was really enjoying her. Other characters like, like Nick and Alicia and Chris, like, I'm not super on board with the kids yet, but... Um, Again, really impressed by just the magnitude and the explosiveness of this episode. Getting to see characters grow was um, a super gratifying experience, despite some of the, you know, the, the slower points that we hit earlier on and then kind of halfway through. Now we are really in the business and things can pretty much go anywhere at this point. And maybe, just maybe, it'll go to the ocean. <laughs> I was tweeting out earlier that I would love to see a swashbuckling overseas pirate apocalypse adventure. I'd be down for that. <laughs> I mean, anything goes at this point. East, west, north, south. Whatever happens, inevitably we're going to encounter a lot of in incredibly um, unique, unique settings as the dead take over and those who are left in their wake endeavor to put the pieces back together, but with everything slightly shifted. So, yeah, what were your favorite moments? What were your not-so-favorite moments? Who, What character are you most enjoying so far? How, how emotionally invested do you feel yet? Again, I, I am still, of course, my, my heart is with The Walking Dead at this point, but I'm going to keep going with the show in the future. Thank you guys super, super much for watching my reviews. They're going to be more consistent. I promise. I promise. So anything I forgot, bring it to the comments. Don't eat me, please. <laughs> and I'll be back with The Walking Dead next week. So y'all be taking care of yourselves. And as always, I'll be back before you know it.